As long as she can remember, Marilyn Morris has been dancing. You know, I can remember rounding up kids in the neighborhood and, you know, doing dance classes together and putting together pieces on roller skates. One of her favorite dance partners was her father. He was, um, in one word, a lot of fun. <laughs> um, that's what I remember the most. At six foot three, William Morris was a sweet, strong man who loved to play with his daughter. A Navy veteran turned teacher, motivational speaker, preacher, and a businessman, he loved his picture-perfect family life. But that life was shattered when Mary Lynn was just 12. He just told my mom, you know, Alyssa, I just need to run up to the store real quick. You know, I'll be right back, sunshine, because he called, he called my mom sunshine. So that was the last time that we saw him. He was driving down one side of the street and two 18-year-old kids who weren't really paying attention crossed the center line and hit him head on. He was basically dead when they brought him in. He had a severe brain injury, was blind in one eye, with a broken hip and a shattered knee. He stayed in a coma for two months, and when he woke up, he was different. He had some forms of old knowledge, you know, in terms of how his brain worked, but he, he couldn't reason in the same way that, uh, you know, adults reason. So it was kind of like having, you know, a little brother. Basic instructions sometimes he wouldn't understand, but at the same time, like, sometimes he would understand some deeper philosophical thing, you know, um, or he'd be able to, you know, answer a Jeopardy question. As years went by, the family kept Bill moving. Walking between the ballet bars was one of his many therapies. But frequent seizures and left side paralysis eventually forced him into a wheelchair. Through it all, Marilyn's outlet was dancing, in high school and as a dance major at the University of South Florida, and eventually with her own students. And as they cared for her father, Mary Lynn and her mother kept adjusting his wheelchairs. Once a person's in a chair, and in most wheelchairs, you know, they become kind of boxed in, they become kind of caged in, and you, want, you still want access to the person. You want to hug them, you want to, you know, shake their hand, you want to be close to them, you know, just in proximity. And it's hard with the way chairs are typically structured. Then in year 2000, Mary Lynn saw a performance by Dancing Wheels, a national mixed ability dance company featuring wheelchair dancers. And that got her thinking as she saw the dancers' movements limited by the constant hand control. I wanted to find a way to make the, the dancer hands free, you know, thinking, realizing that, especially in the manual wheelchairs, but even in power chairs, that they have to put their hands on the wheels um, and then they're constantly having to pump that chair and use their hands and it doesn't leave them free to interact or do other th kinds of things. Today, after years of research collaboration between USF College of Engineering and the College of the Arts, Mary Lynn's hands-free rolling dance chair is a reality. So the idea was to look at, you know, well, what existing technologies do we have and how, we, how can we integrate them? Using a similar concept as a Segway, the research team created a chair that makes the person sitting in it its joystick. If you, know, if you lean forward, it moves forward. If you lean back, it moves back. And if you lean to the right, it, cur it turns. If you lean to the left, it turns. I thought it was pretty amazing because I, had, I hadn't seen anything like that before. An engineer with deep roots in robotics, Catherine De Laurentiis has served as research coordinator on the chair project since 2007. While the two researchers lead the work, the hands-on labor comes from USF's undergraduate engineering students. Brent Savage became part of the chair development team his freshman year at USF. It means a lot to me. I've learned a lot from just doing this with a chair. I mean, it's great to apply actual, actual things you learn in class to an actual engineering application. With this kind of project, they're not helping a grad student. They're not helping me put it together. They're doing that. The first prototype of the chair was granted a patent in June 2010. And in a split second, I went from that person to someone who couldn't move a single part of my body laying in a hospital bed. That same fall, yeah. Assistant Secretary of Veterans Affairs Tammy Duckworth came to visit USF. The decorated Army helicopter pilot lost both of her legs and part of her arm in combat in Iraq. For Mary Lynn, whose father passed away 21 years after his car accident, being able to demonstrate her chair to a powerful veterans advocate was a key moment. Uh, I can try it, sure. 
adaptive technology can mean freedom for someone who has difficulty walking, regardless of whether or not you're completely um, wheelchair bound. The key is making sure that the adaptation is right for the particular person that is going to use it. That kind of adaptation will be available in prototype number two of Mary Lynn's chair. The new chair is a retrofitted standard power wheelchair, which uses more sensors and programming, and it will offer customized seating options based on the needs of its user. USF theater performance major Kimberly Swartz can't wait to test the new version. Born with no feeling below her waist due to spina bifida, Kimmy has some torso and abdominal control, which makes her a good candidate for prototype two. I just think it's a brilliant idea. I'm in a wheelchair and I would have never thought of making something like, her, like the rolling dance chair. For Kimmy, wheelchair dancing and Marilyn's hands-free chair help break stereotypes about people with disabilities. When they see a wheelchair dancer, I think it's just really eye-opening for them and it makes people realize that no matter your disability, you can do whatever you want. Every disability is unique, you know, and, and so one size doesn't fit all. For Mary Lynn, the rolling dance chair represents a chance to serve both the person who needs the chair and the caregivers who so often are stuck behind the wheelchair pushing it. She wants to get beyond a wheelchair that just holds a person and transports them. She wants a chair that brings better quality of life for all involved. And her father's spirit lives on in this special chair that grew out of their family's personal tragedy. I'm always thankful that you know, wow, we had 21 years with him where we might have had no more years with him. 